Let's start working on the footer. I'm going to switch back to layout.blade.php and right here, below the main tag, we're going to add footer component, which we're going to create now. So let's add new file called footer.blade.php within components folder. And before actually writing markup with CSS classes, I'm going to create the skeleton first, just put elements that we're going to have inside the footer. On the left side, there will be navigation, and on the right side, I'm going to put social links. Then down here, we're also going to have a copyright text that is usually displayed in the footer. Let's add copyright symbol, and then I'm going to interpolate app name by using config helper. And then we have to show current year. I'm also going to use dynamic expression for this. We can call date function that is going to return current year if we'll supply capital Y argument like this. And right after we'll just say all rights reserved. Let's switch back to the page and see if all these elements are shown. And they are all here. As the next step will show up all navigation items. So let's go back to the now component. Let's copy this array of navigation items and paste it into footer component. But this array will contain a couple more elements, such as pages, terms, and privacy. And actually, footer navigation will not have login and register links. So let's remove these two entries from here. And then let's write for each loop, just like we have done for navigation inside the header. Let's iterate over array of items. And then we'll receive page address into href variable and page name into label variable. And then we're going to pass the address into href attribute of this link. And the label variable will be used as the content for this link, like so. But if now we're going to check result in the browser, we'll see the following error. That is because we haven't yet defined roads for new pages, terms, and privacy. So let's get back to web.php, duplicate one of the existing roads, and properly change road addresses as well as road names. Now let's create a couple more views for terms and privacy pages. These pages will include layout component and some specific content. Just to differentiate these two pages, I'm going to put different words inside the layout like so. And at some point in the course, we're going to populate all the pages with proper content. Now in the browser, we can see that terms page as well as privacy page work fine and we see all navigation items inside the footer. Now it's time to add some classes to make this look prettier. So for the link element, let's add the following classes. Let's make font bold. The color will be white. And when hovering over on these navigation items, they will have light purple color. And just to put all these navigation items on one line, I'm going to make the parent container flexible and increase the gap between navigation items, let's say 4 units. And the footer is going to be violet, so let's add BG Violet 600 class. Let's check it out. And just to move social links to the far right of the footer, let's make the wrapper element that wraps navigation items as well as social links flexible container. First of all, we'll add class flex, then to center elements vertically, let's use item center class. The minimum amount of space between child elements will be 8 units, and to keep navigation items and social links as far as possible in the footer, let's add justify between class that is going to set CSS property justify content with the value space between. And there we go. Now, in order to increase space in between navigation links and copyright text, I'm also going to make parent container flexible 
where elements will flow vertically as a column and space in between the elements will be 8 units. That is the space in between navigation items and copyright text. And in the browser we can see that the spacing was increased. Now let's restrict the width of the footer so it will not stretch all the way to fill the full width of the window. Let's restrict the width by using container class. And also I'm going to add some paddings. Vertical paddings will be 10 units and horizontal paddings will be 4. This way we're gonna have a little bit more room in the footer. And as I'm going to increase or decrease page width, the footer width will always be aligned with the header width, because both of those elements are contained within the container. As for this copyright text, now we're gonna move it in the center of the footer and make this text white. So let's also decrease font size, make it small, and the color will be not completely white, but very light violet. And finally, to center the content inside this paragraph, let's assign text center class. And there we go, we are seeing the expected result. Now back to these social links. We're going to represent each social icon as an ally element of this unordered list, and each ally item is going to contain link to a particular social network. I'm going to grab social icons from Fontasm website. In here let's copy an SVG of an icon and put it inside this link. And before actually adding the rest of social icons, let's firstly assign some classes to this icon. So I'm going to restrict the width and height of this icon. Let's set the size to 8, then make it white. And when hovering over this icon, let's make color violet, like this. And eventually we end up with such icon. Now I'll add a couple more links to this social links container. And then let's go back to Fantasm website and find icons for every social network we're going to use. I'm going to fast forward the video and search for the following icons. Telegram icon, GitHub icon, and X social network icon. And once all of these icons will be inserted onto the page, let's remove all these comments and take those classes we have used on the first icon and add them to every SVG tag so that all icons look the same. And here is the result. All icons are shown in here, but they are positioned vertically and we need them to be positioned horizontally. So let's make this UL element flexible and increase space in between every icon, set it to 4, like so. And there is a little mismatch in our markup for now because every link is contained within one ally element, but we actually have to create ally elements for each link. So I'm going to add a couple more ally elements and paste particular links within each of those ally elements. And after doing all this, we're getting the expected result. All we have to do is to actually assign proper URLs to these links. So let's use YouTube URL for the first link, the Telegram URL for the second one, GitHub URL for the third link, and finally, X social network URL for the fourth link. Let's also make sure that those links are clickable. I'll click on one of these, and we are expected to be redirected to the proper social network page. And we are. Now that we are done with the footer markup, in the next lesson we're gonna refactor it a bit, so it will be more manageable and maintainable because at the moment the whole footer markup is stored within one file. Link to the source code of the project will be in the video description.